Long, long ago, there was a tailor, a tailor who made fine clothes. And he lived with his wife, and one day they went out into the streets of Basra. And there in Basra they saw a little beggar. Now this little man was famous for telling stories and singing songs and playing jokes. So they invited him to their house for some entertainment. And the little beggar came to their home, and as he was telling them stories, they gave him some fish, some white fish. But the little beggar, one of the fish bones got caught in his throat, and he fell backwards off his stool onto the floor. <laughs> the tailor and his wife thought this was a joke, and they went forward. Wife! He's dead. We've killed him. What will happen to me? I invite this little man to our house and I've killed him with a fishbone. My work as a tailor, I will be ruined. My reputation will be lost. We must get rid of the body. And the tailor and his wife, they wrapped up the body of the little beggar in a carpet and they carried it outside and into the street. Now it was getting dark and there were many people going home. So they said, our child is sick, our child has the fever. So people would go in the opposite direction. But one woman, she said, my master is a doctor. Follow me. And she took the tailor and his wife to the doctor's house. Now the doctor was Jewish. And there at the Jewish doctor's house, there were steps leading to the door. So they followed this servant woman up the steps to the door, and she went inside. But the tailor and his wife, quickly, they unwrapped the body of the little man and left it at the top of the steps. And they took their carpet and they ran back to their home. And when the Jewish doctor came out, he didn't see the body at the top of the steps, and he kicked him by accident. And the little man went bang, 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 bang to the bottom of the steps. The doctor came down the steps and, what have I done? This poor man came to me to be treated as a patient. And I, the doctor, have killed him. <laughs> what will happen to my reputation as the best doctor in Basra? And the Jewish doctor picked up the body and he went up the steps into his house. He wondered what he could do. Now he remembered his neighbour. His neighbour was a steward who worked in the kitchen of the Sultan, the king. His neighbour was the royal steward. So he went to the balcony at the back of his house and he dropped the body into his neighbour's backyard where he stored sacks of sugar and flour. Now at that moment, the Muslim steward, the royal steward, came home. He heard a noise outside. What is it? Is it rats come to take sugar? And he picked up a heavy stick and he went into the backyard and he saw there was a little man leaning against a sack of sugar. Thief, he said, and he struck him hard on his back. The body fell to the ground. Oh, what? Guilt. What said the Muslim steward? This man came to steal a little sugar, this poor man, and I have killed him. What will happen to me? I will lose my reputation. I am the royal steward to the king, the sultan. He picked up the body and he ran out of his house. The streets were empty now, it was late. And in the darkness, he ran down a narrow alleyway towards the canal to dispose of the body. But there, in the alleyway, coming in the opposite direction, he heard the voice of a man singing at the top of his voice, singing so loudly. This was a Christian. The Christian was a moneylender, and he had been drinking. He was singing at the top of his voice. Well, the Muslim steward, he quickly hid the body in a corner in the shed. And he ran back home. 
And the Christian money lender, singing at the top of his voice, came, Oh, what are you doing? You've come to rob me, have you? You thief! And he took him by the shoulders and started banging the little man's head against the wall. At that moment, the officers of the Sultan came by. What are you doing? You've killed him! They arrested the Christian moneylender. And the next morning, in the middle of Basra, there was a great crowd gathered. In front of the crowd sat the Sultan himself in his golden robes. Beside the Sultan stood the governor of the city. And in front of the governor stood the Christian moneylender. On a table beside the governor was the body of the little beggar. You, you killed this poor little man in the streets of Basra last night. What do you say? And the Christian moneylender said, I am guilty. You must punish me. You, the moneylender who has done good business with the Sultan over many years, there is nothing I can say. The moneylender must be hanged by the neck until dead. Well, there was a scaffold, and the moneylender was led up the steps, and the rope was put around his neck. And the moneylender prepared to die. The crowd watched, silent. But then there was a voice. He's innocent. Set him free. You should punish me. And standing there in front of the crowd was the Muslim steward. You should punish me. I am the one who killed this man. He came to steal some sugar from my backyard. I struck him with a club and I killed him. And I hid a body in the alleyway. He was already dead when the money lender found him. You should punish me. What? said the governor. You, the steward of the royal kitchen who has prepared food for the sultan these many years, I have no choice. The steward must be hanged by the neck until dead. And the steward was taken up the steps of the scaffold, the rope was taken from the moneylender's neck and put around his neck. And now the Muslim steward prepared to die. The crowd was still quiet. But then a voice. He's innocent. Set him free. You should punish me. me. Who was it? The Jewish doctor. He stood forward. You should punish me. What are you saying? said the governor. You should punish me. I was the one who killed this little man. He came to my house to be treated. And I kicked him down the steps. And he died, I killed him. I put his body into the Muslim steward's backyard. You should punish me. Oh, said the governor. You, the doctor, who cured the sultan when he was ill. I have no choice. The doctor must be hanged by the neck. Until death. The Jewish doctor was taken up the steps of the scaffold. The rope was taken from the Muslim's neck and put around his neck. And now the Jewish doctor prepared to die. Now the crowd were getting restless. They wanted somebody to be punished. But from the crowd there came a voice. He's, He's innocent. innocent. Set so him free. You, you should punish, punish me. me. Who was it? The tailor. The tailor. 
The tailor stood forward. What is it? said the governor. I am the one who killed him. The little beggar, he came to my house as a guest. I fed him with a piece of fish and he choked on the fishbone. I was the one who killed him. I left his body outside the doctor's house. You? You, tailor, who made this beautiful golden gown that the Sultan wears today, you killed him? <laughs> oh, very well, I've had enough. The tailor must be hanged by the neck until dead. And the tailor was taken up the scaffold, the rope was put around his neck, and finally someone was going to die. <laughs> finally! The crowd were restless. They wanted someone to die. They'd been waiting a long time. But then there was a voice. He's innocent. Oh. Set him free. What? said the governor. And there standing in front of him was a little old man. And the little old man had a long grey beard. And he had a bag. It was the barber. The man who cut the Sultan's hair and beard. What are you talking about, said the governor. Go away. But the barber said, there is a mystery about this murder. And the mystery is that this little man is not dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he opened his bag and out of his bag he took a pair of tongs. And he opened the little beggar's mouth and he put in the tongs and he pulled out the fishbone. And the little beggar. Oh, everybody! Thank you for helping me! <laughs> A fishbone choked me, but now I am well. I know you tried to help me before. First, you kicked me down some steps, but it didn't help. Then you struck me with a heavy stick, but that didn't help either. And then you knocked me against the wall, and that was not successful. But now you've pulled the fishbone out. I am well. Thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs> now, for the first time, the Sultan spoke. The Sultan, in his golden robes, said, Never have I heard such a strange story as the story of this little man. This story must be written down and kept in my royal library. And the little beggar said, this story is not the strangest story. I am a storyteller and I should know. And since you are all here today, this morning, this beautiful morning in Basra, let me tell you a stranger story. And the storyteller, the little beggar, began. Kanya Makan, the Kadim as a man, <laughs> long, long ago. <laughs> that's how I do yes. That was the magic. What, that was the point that I. Yes. That I. Uh, the my question is uh, how did the start begin yeah uh, for me it was very interesting because the couple uh, they invited the men to eat in their in their house in the beginning, they show that they are good people because they invited a, a poor man to eat in their house. But when they realized that this man died, they decided to be free of this bird. They said, maybe we can maybe live in the river. And they put in the, in the carpet this man, but they couldn't do what they wanted.
question was that um, it's, it's a ch children's story and um, I think it is not for a children's story because um, it has many expressions of quite violent, you know, kicking someone from uh, the <laughs> stairs and hitting someone from the back and smashing someone's head on the wall and, and in the last part of the story there was um, uh, a part of the execution um, that, and everyone says that um, he must be um, dead by hanging his neck. So I think it's not for a story for for student for kids in the kindergarten. I think it's um, a story for a bit more grown. What age? About from eight or nine, eight or nine years old. Not 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 for five or four. What or do five other years people? Old. What do other people think? Teenagers. <laughs> for teenagers. Thank you for teenagers. Yes, for teenagers. They can understand this story. Yeah. <laughs> Clear. My question. the story. Yes, I think uh, he liked the story because uh, they, show, they show the emotion and uh, the energy when, the, when, the, when, he tell, when he told the story and the uh, heart and show both, both the uh, movements and uh, I like this. <laughs> the fact that which character made as made a strong impression on you. I think that the courage, courage, uh, the guilty people have, because I think that in the story there was a, a tailor, doctor, and the whole is banjo. The uh, uh, steward, steward. Yeah, the steward. 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 He was like the manager of the kitchens. Yes, yeah. steward and the Christian. Money lender. Money lender. Yeah, this four. Each one of these four, in his mind, thought that I am guilty for the, the of this man. Beggar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm responsible for this beggar. And they think that the other person is innocent. And when the court began to judge and the, to condemn the people God began to the last man. Uh, you must die, punish to die. But the uh, other person said no, think that I'm really guilty for this. It is not good innocent to die and to assume it, to have this courage. Mm 